this guy, this guy, he's going to be one of the best acts in the Irish circuit and the international circuit at the moment. He's going to have a great time. I'll get on his way. Let him do his thing. Please, start the round of applause from over here. Start the applause here. Start it 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 here. We've just left my house now in Poppentry and we're driving down through the heart of Poppentry into Ballymun and we're going to the Axis uh, Art Centre. The Joy in the Hood programme that I featured in with Des Bishop on RTE was centred in the Axis, uh, Axis Theatre here. Um, and the whole process initially involved me coming down to the Axis one day after work for a, um, um, an audition for a potential comedy workshop which had no mention of Des or TV. Um, so basically I came down here after work one day, um, got off the bus soaking wet, uh, came in and uh, I think the auditions were between 12 and eight. I got here about six and I was asked to fill out a questionnaire there out in the lobby, uh, finish these five sentences in a humorous kind of way. And uh, when I had done that, I was looking at the girl going, uh, is that it? Do you not want me to tell you a few jokes? And uh, she said, no, you have to go upstairs for the interview. So upstairs I went and, uh, and walked into a room and there was uh, Des Bishop and uh, a guy called Mike Casey, who was the producer of the show, a massive big TV camera. Uh, they sat me down, they explained the process and then it started to hit home what this was all about. Uh, as Keith mentioned there, my name is Eric Lawler and as you can tell the accent already, I'm, I'm disadvantaged. <laughs> That's slightly better, I think. Yeah, it's great to see you turn out here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's similar in, in our kind of approach and our, the way we tell stories and I suppose how we sound as well and how we kind of look to ugly heads. And um, it would be rare that we'd be on the same bill. But as coming up, I do a lot of hosting work as well, um, a stand up. So a lot of the times I would see him in the early days and just thought, like, oh my God, this guy's going to be something special here. And, uh, and to prove right, like, you know, it's one of these things that, like, you see people, they start with a huge bang, like that, and um, they, they fade away pretty quickly, but he's got the longevity, and he, he applies himself well. He just, he works hard, he doesn't, like, you know, he doesn't lie in bed all day, like some comics that we know just say like that. Instead, I'll, I'll go to work at eight o'clock, and then I'll get back into bed at, like, six in the morning. But he's constantly working, thinking about what's the next plan, and it's not just stand up and trying to get into acting and more writing and uh, into TV, like, so he's always, thinking about where he's going with his with his uh, with his comedy and with his career so I like that I just think hard work will pay off and he's one of the hard workers in the game I think so far um, I've been vindicated in my decision to uh, to leave the day job but um, it doesn't mean I, I, I I'm gonna get complacent I think if anything um, the hard work starts now uh, or starts a year ago um, but uh, you know I mean I, I just have to keep my head down and keep working hard and try just try to improve as a comedian if I want to make um, a decent living at it, you know. This is backstage at the Axis. This is the uh, the green room. Um, this is where we all. Oh, and it's locked. It's locked. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, that's that's where we all sit. Um, you know, before the gigs, where we all have our cups of coffee and exchange nervous stories and hopes for the for the gigs ahead. And this is the room where um, uh, enjoying the hood, uh, you see Des almost like a football manager. Uh, giving us the final pep talk before we went out and did our very first gigs here in front of a, a sold out uh, audience of 230 people from the local community and as you can imagine tensions were very very high in that room we were all you know brothers in arms and all that kind of thing but extremely nervous because we'd never done a gig before um, and it went on to be a great night uh, we, we all just about survived and uh, yeah I suppose the green room here in the access holds a lot of uh, Great personal memories for me, and uh, I'm sure I'll be back again uh, doing gigs. And you know, the, the long term aim is to resurrect the House of Fun Comedy Club and have Tommy Tiernan and Des Bishop Jason Bourne, all the boys, walk through that door again and perform to uh, another sold out crowd in the Axis. So, uh, so if you want to do, we'll do a little walk basically. This is the green room, so we walk from here, we get the shout to go on stage, we come through these doors here, and uh, we walk through here, and this is the moment where you're going, right, it's now or never, it's now or never. <laughs> we walk through this door here, 
you can hear the crowd all buzzing. You get your name called out. Now obviously this isn't set up the way the comedy club will be set because there's a play going on in the access at the moment, but you walk out here onto this stage. Hopefully you're looking at it, a full house and uh, and basically you walk into the centre of the stage, the lights go down, the light is all just focused on you, you grab the mic and it's ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the house of fun. And it's usually. Not today obviously. The Laugh Lounge, um, it's, it, now it's a venue I've played quite a lot, but it's, um, it's one of those venues that uh, can be brilliant, amazing, but it can also be the other side, it can be, it can be awful, you know. As you've seen out there, it's a full house out there tonight. I'm quite excited about being back, but at the other side, very nervous as well, like, you know. Well, there is one advantage, ladies and gentlemen, to being disadvantaged, and that is nobody will ever accuse me of being a paedophile. <laughs> I think he couldn't possibly own the computer. <laughs> a man's work is never done. I thought, you know, with the with the uh, with the full time comedy existence, that I would have a lot more time to focus on the writing, and and and, and get. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And other people have told me that before he went full time. But I thought, no, I'll show them right. But uh, it is hard to sit down every day, open the laptop, and just try to be funny. It's just. You know, sometimes it'll come in waves, and other times there'll be a famine, and it's like writer's block, you just come on. You, you might write something, and you go, what the hell are you thinking? There's nothing funny about that at all. Well, that's the material that I'll never see the light of day again. Thank you very much <laughs> for your honesty. <laughs> There's no danger of the lads of the let you get away with monk. I love that. I'm a father of four children, so I do have another life. Um, a pretty hectic, busy life, um, looking after kids and being a parent and all that comes with that. And uh, I suppose the, the nice bit of me time <laughs> that I get is when I walk up onto that stage after my name has been announced and the light goes up and the round of applause has died and I'm just about to utter my first words. As I say, that's, that's the most exhilarating feeling in the world um, and terrifying and uh, I, I love the sensation and it's, it's almost like a drug, um, I'm kind of addicted to it and uh, as long as I have uh, a breath in my body I'll, I'll continue gigging and um, hopefully to bigger and better crowds uh, in the years which, which just shows, goes to show that you've been successful but yeah the biggest thrill for me in comedy right now is going up onto that stage and taking the microphone off the stand and hello ladies and gentlemen I'm Eric Lawler, that's it, doesn't get any better.